I'm Matt St. Jean. And I'm Thomas Anzarello. And welcome to your 2019-2020 Friars basketball season preview. Let's start with uh, what the roster looked like this year, Thomas. We'll start with the losses. Friars are losing a couple key players from last year. First of all, Isaiah Jackson has graduated, and the team also loses Drew Edwards and Makai Ashton Langford to transfers. Yeah, no, they definitely lose a couple senior leadership guys, but you bring back a lot of talent as well and a lot of experience uh, as well. You know, David Duke and AJ Reeves, the two mm -hmm. guys that really got them starting a lot of last year. A um, little more experience back now. You bring back also Abbott Hola guy uh, on another waiver transfer mm -hmm. uh, or waiver. Um, so he's going to bring that veteran leadership, and he's a guy that's been in a couple tournament games. Yeah. He's been here for a couple of years. In his uh, sixth season overall. <laughs> exactly. So it's great to have a guy like that on your roster uh, if you're Ed Coley. And then you, you bring in a grad transfer in, in Luan Pipkins, a guy who's played against the Friars, um, had the game-winning shot last year against PC at the dunk uh, when they overcame a 20-point uh, deficit to beat the Friars. Um, so he's a guy who's been four years at UMass, grad transfer now, great for the Friars to add and add to their rotation, especially the point guard position because, Matt, it is probably the toughest position to play in all of college basketball. Oh, absolutely. And you, you bring in a guy who averaged 16 points a game last year over five assists. Mm -hmm. And then from the re recruiting perspective, you're also adding Greg Gant, who was 67th overall in the nation, who's kind of that wing forward type guy. And I mean, with the depth on this team, he's also, you don't need a lot from him this year, even though he could give you a lot. And then for the roster, they also add uh, Noah Horkler and Jared Bynum as transfers, mm -hmm. but they won't play next se this season. You will see them next <laughs> season as uh, they're not eligible. But yeah, those, those two guys definitely need impact. Uh, down the road, Jared Bynum, a guy that coming out of St. Joe's, mm -hmm. um, you know, really can, can just flat out score. He's a walking yeah. bucket oh, if, yeah. if you want to call him that. Um, and uh, Noel Horker, a guy transferring from, he'll just have one year left eligibility, whereas Bynum will have three years of eligibility once they mm -hmm. start playing next year. Uh, yeah. Definitely know those two additions. And then also Greg Gannon as well. He's what Ed Cooley always, always has every single year. Mm -hmm. It's been the guy that can play multiple positions, lengthy guy, quick guy, can step yeah. out and shoot a little yeah. as well. Um, you know, I'm excited to see what Greg can, can add to this team this year. Yeah, absolutely. But you can't talk about this roster without bringing up injuries. The Friars a little bit banged up heading into the season opener tomorrow against Sacred mm -hmm. Heart. Uh, you've got Nate Watson, who won't be in the lineup. He has a sprained MCL per uh, Kevin McNamara. And you've also got Greg Gant and Pipkins, Khalif Young, a little bit banged up. Yeah, no, Luan um, has been practicing. Um, so he had a hamstring problem and, and was kind of limited in some of the minutes that he saw. Um, so Ed Coley and, and company are kind of keeping a close eye uh, on him. So we'll see how he plays in the minutes. Yes, they did play in the scrimmage against Purdue in the closed secret scrimmage, <laughs> as they call him. Um, and Khalif Young as well, he was playing the exhibition game. It's been going along. Mm -hmm. um, but Greg Gann, a guy that, that may be out for a little bit, um, but he's kind of been day-to-day, -day, starting to get some reps mm -hmm. and stuff. So good to see him um, starting to get going again. So we'll see what the time frame is on, on Gann when, when he will play. But I think I would expect to see Pipkins and Khalif Young at least get some minutes uh, tomorrow. And also uh, Emmett Hola as well. Um, so we'll see how he manages those minutes. Yeah, Pipkin's a guy. I mean, I think we're all excited to see what he looks like in a Friars uniform. And, uh, I mean, he's a talented guy. Mm -hmm. could possibly get the start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if we're looking at projected starters, I think it's Pipkin's in there. You got guys like mm -hmm. David Duke, A.J. Reeves, and obviously Alpha Diallo. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nate Watson when he's healthy, which you go through that list. Those are the five players for this Friars team that were on Team USA, representing the United States in the Pan American Games over the summer, coached by our own Ed Cooley. Now, to talk about the uh, expectations for the season and the schedule, the team is going to start against Sacred Heart tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. That's your opener. And then after that, you, you get a little bit of time, but then you start to get into the meat of the schedule with some really, really tough games against big name opponents. Yeah, the Friars definitely, and that's what Ed Cooley and Company always love to do. They schedule these big time opponents uh, on their roster. You talk about a home game against Texas, mm -hmm. but also really early in season two, next week they're going to play at Northwestern, which was a team that made the NCAA tournament just a couple of seasons ago um, out there uh, in, in the, in the uh, big time conference. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, schools like University of Florida, who's just got a, a big grad transfer in Kerry Blackshear out of Virginia Tech. They're already, people are saying, could be a Final Four contender. Um, Friars play them December 17th at the Barclays Center. Um, yeah, team it, ranked number six in the country right yeah. now. So that could be a very, mm -hmm. very big test for the Friars team. Yeah, no, definitely. There's a lot of uh, big tests for the Friars and go out to play uh, in California as well. Tournament they played there a couple seasons ago with Chris Dunn when they beat, mm -hmm. uh, they knocked off Arizona a tournament and just fell, uh, fell a little bit short to Michigan State. I remember that with Chris Dunn. Uh, in company out there on the West yeah. Coast. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll head back to Long Beach. Might mm -hmm. get another chance against Arizona there in the tournament field this year, uh, as is Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. So 
there's a chance the Friars could play teams from all of the other major conferences. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you get the Big Ten represented with North, uh, Northwestern, and those are the gap tip-off games. Friars mm-hmm. returning to that. You got SEC with Florida. You've got the ACC with Wake Forest, and you might get Pac-12 there with Arizona, and Big 12 with Texas coming here after beating them at uh, at Austin last season, and that wraps up the non-conference schedule. That home game in December. You also have your your rivalry game at URI to at the start of December, and then conference play starts December 31st, New Year's Eve, at home against Georgetown. So that would yeah. be a big tilt. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Big East is going to be gauntlet this year. It was a gauntlet last year, but really a little bit of down year for the Big East. Mm-hmm. They still performed at a very high level, but this year, uh, Ken Palmer having him as the second best yeah. conference in the country. I um, mean, just one through ten, it, it, it's going to be tough. You know, obviously St. John's going through a little bit of, of uh, a turnover with mm-hmm. uh, Mike Anderson, the new coach, Chris Mulligan being let go over the offseason. Uh, Dave Lito losing a guy like Max Struess last year, mm-hmm. who was just everything for DePaul, everything they wanted, everything they needed. Um, so they're kind of going through a little bit of a rebuilding. Um, but DePaul also bringing in a, a top 25 recruiting class in the country mm-hmm. uh, into this year. But I think definitely the teams to, do, to compete for a Big East championship. Big, Providence will definitely be in there. You add in Seton Hall with Miles Powell, who mm-hmm. could be a one seed in the tournament. Also Villanova uh, as well, obviously Jay Wright. Mm-hmm. They're looking for national championships. That's what they do. And uh, definitely Xavier coming in uh, as well. Even Marquette, you know, they lose the two Hauser brothers. But, you know, don't forget, they still you know, Marcus have Marcus Howard, who's a preseason All-American. So <laughs> we'll have to see how, you know, each game is kind of played out. You have to take it game by game. You can't overlook any game in the Big East, Not and enough. that's what makes this conference so great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you got Marcus Howard out there and Miles Powell in your conference, two National Player of the Year contenders, uh, Friars finishing fourth in the preseason coaches poll, tied with Marquette. But there's only, there are only two votes shy of Xavier. And, I mean, it's the, the middle of the pack in the Big East mm-hmm. is very, very tight. There's going to be a lot of competition. And you've got Seton Hall and Villanova right now leading the pack. But those teams aren't invincible. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a lot of competition up and down. And, uh, I mean, some people have had the, the Friars at uh, 31. That's what Ken Palm has them at right now. They got one vote in the AP Top 25. But the, the one thing that's going to stand out to anybody following the Friars this offseason, you look at preseason rankings, Matt Norlander mm-hmm. over at CVS Sports, putting the Friars not just at first in the Big East, but 15th in the country in his preseason poll. Yeah, he definitely has them um, you know, really up there. He really believes in, in Ed Cooley and mm-hmm. what he's been able to do here over the course of his tenure at Providence College. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's really, really excited about a lot of the talent that they bring in, you know, bringing in a guard we mentioned before in Pipkins. Mm-hmm. You know, Duke and Reese, if, if they if everybody can stay healthy, mm-hmm. this could be a team that he's thinking could make a be a dark horse Final Four team. And um, you have to say, with all the, the talent they have, it, it can definitely be possible. Uh, let's see what Nate Watson can, can do at it as well, mm-hmm. how he has grown. Because, you know, Ed Cooley said from his freshman year that he could be a, a breakout, you know, biggest mm-hmm. player of the year candidate. And um, he, every single year you can see the talent, you know, uh, of him getting better and better. and there's no one else better than Nate Watson down in a block in the Big East. I mean, he can just go through anybody he wants, and he's been forced to reckon with for sure. Oh, yeah. you got uh, There's plenty of uh, Big East players around that are out there that are afraid of running into Nate Swatson yes. down in the post. <laughs> but this is a team certainly with a lot of talent, a lot of upside, and some depth. Just got to work through the injury concerns, and I think this is, there's a very high ceiling on this Friars team this year. Yeah, no doubt. It's going to be exciting, and uh, can't wait to tip things up at the dunk tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. Uh, for PCTV, I'm Matt St. Jean. This is Tom Zinzarella. Thanks for watching. Go Friars.